Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be finding the derivatives of other exponential functions without a base of e. It's going to be some numeric uh, base here. We're going to be finding derivatives of um, log functions that aren't natural log functions with some other base besides e. So finding derivatives of other exponential functions without a base of e, finding derivatives of log functions uh, with bases other than e. Alright, so let's take a look at the derivative of y equals a to the x. So when we, it behaves very similarly to the derivative of e to the x, which is just itself. So let's take a look at that more specifically. Okay, if I bring in the derivative operator d over dx, and I'm differentiating a to the x, that might be 7, that might be 5, etc. Well, the answer is going to be a to the x, just like e to the x is e to the x's derivative, uh, but we have a constant multiplier, and that constant multiplier is the natural log of whatever the base is of a. So this is the formula that once we identify we have an exponential function, we would use to find the derivative. It'd be nice if all day long they just gave us basic parent functions to find the derivatives of, but you know it's going to get more involved than that. All right, let's say that we have an exponential function whose base is some number, but the exponent is more composite. It's not just x. It's not just basic. Okay, um, then that's going to require the chain rule. All right, so what we notice here is that we have a derivative of an exponential function. So that answer is going to be the function itself times the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be the exponent, with respect to x. So that would be du. All right, times, and then we have another factor here. Okay, so it's not just simply the chain rule this way. We're also going to multiply by the natural log of the base. And once we know what that base is, that number value, this is just a constant multiplier. So that's it. Those are the two rules. So let's do a few examples uh, using those formulas. Okay, so here are examples. All right, our objective becomes to find the derivative of this exponential function. So again, you don't have to bring in the derivative operator, but every once in a while I like to bring it back in just so we don't forget what it looks like. Okay, I'm bringing in this derivative operator. Okay, so when I differentiate the left side of the equation, this becomes a rate of change of y with respect to x. Remember, these variables don't match up, uh, and so we have dy dx equals... Okay, this is not the power rule, so we've identified it as an exponential function. It is a composite exponential function where this is considered our u right here. It's not just x. So the derivative is the function itself times the derivative of the u, which is negative 7x, times the natural log of the base, which happens to be 3. And a little cleanup would have you find this to be negative 7. Okay, so yeah, what's common practice? How do we usually manage all of you know, these items here? Well, the way I usually see it is negative 7 ln 3, and you might see that all put in parentheses, um, times 3 raised to the negative 7x. There might be another set of parentheses around this exponential part too, but um, we just want to make sure that we know that we're not multiplying the negative 7 into that base. That's not something we can do. So this is the derivative of that given exponential function. Okay, one more. Bringing in the derivative operator, I'm just going to kind of save some time here, applying that to both sides of this equation. All right, over here, we've identified this as an exponential function. So we know the answer is going to contain the function itself. But we also know this is considered our u, our inside function. Okay, so we've got to multiply by the derivative with respect to x of sine of 3x times... Going back to the formula, it's the inside function, the natural log of 2. It's just a constant multiplier every time. So we have a little more work to do, so we'll come down here and finish that. All right, taking care of this part of the problem here, this factor, 
I've noticed it is a composite function. So the chain rule has us finding the derivative of sine, which is cosine, leaving 3x alone. But don't forget, we are going to eventually multiply by the derivative of 3x, which is 3. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. It's not too complicated of a chain rule, so I'll do um, both derivatives right there in the same line. Okay, and then what does the cleanup look like? Well, let's see. Uh, it looks like 3ln2, grouping all of those factors, times cosine of 3x, just to manage it, just a bunch of parentheses here, times the exponential part right here. Um, I'm sure there's more things you can do, uh, but at this point, um, this is good enough. Okay, looking at another example and incorporating several of the differentiation rules that we've worked with so far. Okay, if you were given y equals 4x to, 4 raised to the x times x to the fifth. So when we look at this problem right here, how do we proceed if I'm going to find the derivative? Well, the first thing I notice is that I have a product of two variable factors, so I'm going to identify my f and g functions, uh, and I'm putting my plan together. It appears that I'm going to end up with uh, having to use the product rule. I didn't bring in the derivative operator here. We have our hands full with that product rule. So let's do the setup. The first factor left alone times the derivative with respect to x of x to the fifth. Already noticing these variables agree. There's no implicit differentiation. Plus the second factor times the derivative of the first. Already thinking about what's going on here. That's an exponential, so that's the new lesson, the new skill we're learning. I'm going to go ahead and use parentheses to help me manage my work. I'll decide later if I need to remove them or not. 5x to the fourth, simple derivative here. Okay, thinking about this derivative, now I have changed gears in my brain. Now I have to use the exponential rules. This is not a power function, so I'm not using the power rule. I've identified the type of, type of function, and so it requires the appropriate differentiation rule. So this derivative is itself times the derivative of the exponent, which is just 1 times the natural log of the base, which is 4. Um, you've done the calculus part. All you have to do is clean it up. Uh, I, I suppose I would leave this um, term the way it is here. Uh, I guess you could switch the parentheses. I don't see any benefit in doing that. Um, I guess, or times 5x to the fourth. I, I wouldn't take that 5 and multiply it into the 4 for sure. I'm just going to leave it the way it is plus over here, um, just a personal choice of how you want to arrange all these factors. It's, it's certainly up to you. Okay, what I do see that you might want to be on the lookout for if you were to check the back of the book with an odd problem is, um, likely the author looked in here and found a common factor. And if you try and look in here and find that common factor, you're going to see that you can divide a 4x out from both terms, and it appears that x to the fourth is appearing as a common factor in both of these terms too. So pulling that, dividing that out of what we have here would be left with 5 plus, uh, looks like natural log of 4, uh, times it looks like I have an x left here. So you'd probably see that right in front there. Um, so we wouldn't confuse that to be natural log of 4x. It's x times the natural log of 4. Okay. All right, so that, that may be something that you guys, you do see. All right, let's look at another example with this new um, differentiation rule. What if we have this quotient? 2 raised to the 3x over x squared. Uh, as you might uh, imagine, we're going to use, uh, I'm going to use the quotient rule. You could certainly pull x squared up as x to the negative 2 and jump into the product rule, um, but I guess I'm just going to jump into the quotient rule.
minus the numerator times the derivative with respect to x of the denominator. I think I'll write to the side a little bit just to save myself some room here. All right, I'm right here at this point. I've identified this as an exponential function, so the derivative is itself. Let's see if we can do this all mentally. Times the derivative of the exponent, so that'd be 3, times the natural log of the base. That's just all part of that formula. I've completed finding the derivative. And for this next piece, that's the power rule, so we're just going to multiply by 2x. This will be all over x to the fourth. Um, I think as a final step here, what you want to look for is a common factor of all the terms of that answer. So as I kind of study what's going on here, um, I, can, I can see, and perhaps you can see too, that in this group and in this group, um, I have all at least one x, an x to the first power. So I'm going to divide one out from here, one out from here, and then that would also uh, factor out to x to the zero. Okay, let's just do a little cleanup. Uh, looks like I'm going to have x ln 2. All I did was took this remaining x and multiplied it right here. Oh, I have a 3 also. How about x times 3 x times 3 ln 2 times 2 to the 3x minus I don't know 2 times 2 raised to the 3x. Yeah, I'm sure you can do some more factoring, but that's good enough for right now. That's um, you know practicing our new skill of finding derivatives of exponential functions. Time to move on to finding derivatives of log functions with bases other than e. Um, and I can I can tell already I'm going to have to continue in another video, but I'm going to go ahead and use these last few minutes um, to kind of get you ready for that that formula. Um, so let's look at derivatives of log functions. Okay, I'm going to take you back to something in your past. It's been a while, um, but for example, let me, before I get into these derivatives, let me kind of come over here, and, and you can kind of just absorb this and watch and then come back to the formulas in a minute, but I kind of want to take you right here to this point where I say, hey, can you find this answer mentally without using a calculator? What's log base 2 of 8? Okay, well, I'm still here. Log base 2 of 8, that is saying to you, if you guess 3, 3 is the right answer. Okay, This is saying to you 2 as a base to what power gives you an answer of 8. 2 to what power is 8? And you might remember coming out of log form and, and setting this up um, in exponential form. Okay, so that's, that's well and good and everything, but how do I find log base 2 of 9? I mean, 2 to what power is 9? Well, of course, my answer is going to have to be a little bit more than 3, 3 point something, something small. Well, I can't do that mentally. How do I do this on the calculator? Okay, how would I find this? Well, you're thinking, well, hey, those calculators with the new software, I just call up that template and I type it in and it gives me an answer. Absolutely, but prior to that new software, what is the math um, that we used? And on the calculator, what is the math they're using that's going to get um, these answers? So let's go back to this first example right here. Let me remind you about something perhaps from your past. And if not, it might not be taught. Um, let's look at what we can do uh, if we didn't have that nice template on the calculator to dump 2 and 8 into and get 3. And, and actually, it's what the calculator is doing. Okay, so we would take, it's a change of base is what it's called. You take log of the number, set up a fraction, and divide it by log of the base. So on your calculator, we did have a base 10 button. So when you did log of 8 with the log key on the calculator, divided by log 2, that answer that spits out from the calculator, I encourage you to try it, is 3. It is 3. Okay, we also have an LN, a natural log button on the calculator. So would I still get 3 even if I use the natural log key? Try it. Natural log of 8 divided by natural log of 2. It's also equal to 3. As a matter of fact, it doesn't matter what base you have here. You're still going to get 3 when you divide log of the number, no matter the base, divided by log of 2 here. 
no matter these bases are here. And I know that seems strange, but that's the way that you can do that on the calculator. Okay, and that's going to help us when we think about the derivatives of the log function as well. Because we can do a change of base on this, as a matter of fact. Okay, so um, I think I'll continue the next video by starting with this right here.